Here is my last physics final exam solution. I'm going over my uh, solutions to my final exam. Uh, just a quick note, uh, you can find the other ones. Hopefully I'll link them in the, in the description down below. Uh, you know, I, I tried, this is a calculus-based physics course. We use matter and interactions. I tried to make things non-tricky. Uh, this was a little bit different too because they had to take it uh, remotely, but let's just solve this problem. And all these are based on other problems I've seen. I'm not that creative. Uh, so let's get to it. In a movie, and I printed it out. See, I printed it out. In a movie, a person tries to rotate a merry-go-round by shooting a bullet at it. Uh, and I don't even know what movie that was, but I remember seeing it. So assume the bullet has a mass of 10 grams, which is probably too high, and a velocity of 300 meters per second, which is probably okay since bullets can go slow and fast. Uh, the merry-go-round is a disc, and the moment of inertia is 1 half mr squared with a mass of 200 kilograms and a radius of 2.1 meters. I don't know why I did 2.1. Assuming the bullet hits in the best possible location, which I didn't say what it was, and sticks to the merry-go-round, what is the maximum angular velocity of the merry-go-round after the bullet collides? So let's draw a picture. Uh, so here's my merry-go-round. It's a disc. R. Now let's go ahead and put I equals 1 half M R squared. M disc is, what did I say? 200 kilograms. R disc, I'll just leave that as R, is 2.1 meters. And then M bullet is 10 times 10 to the negative 3, yeah, that's right, which would be 10 to the negative 2 kilograms. And V bullet is 300 meters per second. So what I want to do is take this bullet, and I want to hit it right here on the corner. That's going to be the best possible location to hit that. I mean, imagine if you hit it right at the center, it's not going to make it rotate at all. The further away you hit it, the better it's going to be. Now, but what's the big idea? What's the main principle in this, uh, in this problem? And it's the angular momentum principle. So the angular momentum principle says, I'll write angular momentum principle. This says that uh, the torque, the net torque about some point on an object is equal to the change in angular momentum with respect to time. And L is the angular momentum and T is the torque. Now, if I pick my system of the bullet plus the disc, then torque net O equals zero, right? Because you could imagine, <clears throat> when we define torque as R cross F, and yes, that's the cross product, uh, it, in the torque about some point uh, depends on, if this exerts a torque, it depends on the force, right? That the bullet hits the, the disc, which I just have no idea of knowing what that would be. So I can't actually calculate the torque that this bullet hits on there or the time, I need the time too, right? I need both of these, I don't have either of those. But if I pick the system of the bullet plus the merry-go-round, then the torque on my whole system is zero. And if that's the case, then the change in angular momentum is zero. So that would mean that the angular momentum before is equal to the angular momentum after. And that's what I wanna use. This is conservation of angular momentum for a bullet hitting a merry-go-round. Now we actually have two kinds of angular momentum here. We have the angular momentum of a point particle. So L of the point particle is gonna be R cross P, where P is the momentum and R is a vector from the point that you wanna calculate, which we'll use that center right there, to the bullet. So that's R and that's P. And you'll notice R cross P, you would think, oh, well, it's gonna change, right? Because a little bit later, the bullet's right there, a little bit later, it's right there. But in fact, it doesn't change. It's the same value the whole time. So I'm gonna use this location, P, R. Because at that point, they're perpendicular. You do get the same thing. I think I did this before. I don't wanna redo that. So the magnitude of, and so the angular momentum in this case beforehand, using the right-hand rule would be into the, the paper. Uh, so afterwards, the angular momentum is going to be into the paper. So that's the negative z direction. So I'm going to say LZ1 is going to be 
the magnitude of R times the magnitude of P times the sine of the angle between them, but at this point the sine of the angle is going to be 1. Actually, yeah, and then I'd use the right hand rule to find the, the show that it's in the negative direction. So this is going to be equal to a negative the radius of the disc times the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet, right? Because the momentum is mass times velocity. And that's the angular momentum before the collision. Now, after the collision, LZ2, I would use the other definition of angular momentum, I omega where I is the moment of inertia, which is a, a measure of the distribution of the mass about the point of rotation, and omega is the angular velocity, and that's what I want to find. So in the z direction, this is going to be negative I omega plus, now I still have the bullet. The bullet's still rotating, so I still have to include that. Uh, it's going to be, if you didn't, I probably wouldn't even take off points, okay, because it's going to be a very small contribution. Uh, so it'd actually be R P2, where P2 is the final momentum, and that's going to be equal to negative, it's neg negative, negative I omega minus R, and the P2 is going to be mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet, but the velocity of the bullet stuck in the merry-go-round. So uh, V equals omega times R for a rotating object. So I can put in omega R. And then let's put this as uh, negative one half m r squared omega minus m b. That's the mass of the, the the disc. M b r squared omega. And now I can factor that out, and I get negative. I get negative one half m disc plus mass of the bullet times r squared omega. And I want it, this has to be equal to this, and I want to solve for omega. Let's switch to a new sheet of paper. I'll write that out. So I get negative r mass of the bullet, velocity of the bullet, equals negative one half mass of the disc plus mass of the bullet times r squared omega. And I want to solve for, and that's not omega, this is, still, this is just omega. There's nothing there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to divide by negative 1. I can divide by one of the r's, and I can solve for omega, and I get omega equals mb vb, that's the velocity of the bullet, divided by 1 half mass of the disk plus the mass of the bullet times r. And you'll notice here that that's 200 kilograms times a half, that's 100 kilograms, and then this is the mass of the bullet, which is 10 grams. So if you left that out, it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, so let's put in our values. I get mass of the bullet, which was, uh, let's see, 0 0.01, right, kilograms. The velocity of the bullet was 300. I'm leaving off the units because I'm lazy. 1 half times 100 plus 0 0.01 times the radius of 2.1. And I get, using my calculator, let's put it in here, uh, RPN calculator that had to hack for the power supply, I get 0 0.01, enter 300 times. Now I need to do this. I'm just going to put that as 50. 50, enter, and I could have done that, 0 0.01 plus, multiply it by 2.1, 2.1 times, and now divide that and I get uh, 2.2.86 times 10 to the negative 2 radians per second. And that's the angular velocity. So the answer is super slow, right? Not very fast at all. Uh, that bullet's not going to do too much. Okay, that's it. That's, a, that's the introductory calculus based first semester physics course final exam. Uh, I'll try to link things to the other problems down below, but I hope you enjoyed that. I had fun. I'll talk to you later.